Hey guys, hope everything's going well. You guys know the drill. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below. Alright, today I wanted to talk about consignment. And one of the places I've sent my cards for consignment is Probstein. Probstein, however you say his last name. It's owned by Rick Probstein. He's out in New Jersey. And the way it goes is you take your card... You send it out to him via USPS, FedEx, UPS, and you put a sheet of paper in there and you write down your name, your information. Before it used to be PayPal, but now I think you need to send him ACH information if you're in the US. I don't know if he does Canadian, deals with Canadians. So I think that would have to be a wire. And you put down the card information as well. If you do that, his team puts the card up on his eBay fairly quickly. I believe it takes maybe a day or two. There was one time where it took him a week to put up the card, but that's fine. I th or a week or two, I don't remember how long. Regardless, that process is usually seamless. And what happens is... Once the card sells, he gets the money, he sends you the money, and he has many followers, so the price of the card should be in your advantage, in my opinion. The caveat is the money that is being sent to you is actually a cash advance. He lists that in his spreadsheet. So if an individual returns the card, in my opinion, or not in my opinion, legally, you have to pay him back if the card is relisted and then the card sells for less. Correct me if I'm wrong. If someone's had that experience, uh, let me know below. And my experience so far has been mixed with Propstein. It's great how he puts the cards up for sale quickly and he has many followers and you should get a competitive price for your card. I like that fact. In that regards, I would use him. Now, where I have issues with him, or one experience, is that if the guy doesn't pay, which it's not his fault, or gal doesn't pay, the first time around I dealt with it, he gave the guy 16 days to pay. This was for an Usain Bolt uh, BGS9 card that I showed you earlier. I valued that earlier at twelve to $1,500. Uh, but that's not the price as of right now. And my card sold initially for $1,100. I was like, okay, that's decent. And this card, the guy didn't pay. So I'm like, great. I suggested to him, maybe you should have a second offer. They didn't do that. I guess it's their company policy not to give second offers. Maybe they don't want to waste time with it because they have so much volume. Okay, I get it. So that was one criticism. They won't do second offers. For my card, at least. Maybe he's done for others. Secondly, this guy waited 16 days to relist it. The way that my wife and I work is if the guy or gal doesn't pay for four days, we send them a message saying, if you don't pay, we're going to go um, to basically eBay collections. Well, it's not eBay collections, uh, but we send them a warning saying that if you don't pay, it's going to be listed as a strike. And you could always message us saying that, you know what, I'm not going to pay. And we'll just cancel the order. But sometimes they ignore our message. If they ignore our message, we wait about three days after the fact and we ding their account. And the card gets relisted within one week. So with Probstein, how his system works, at least with this one, it took 20 days for him to relist it. And when he relisted it, the card value plummeted to $780. I was like, eh, okay, still a decent price. Guess what? The buyer canceled again. I've never had that before. The There are two buyers in a row that refused to pay. He relisted it quickly the third time around. 
Probably because he understands that I'm already peeved. I'm already ticked off. This time around, the card sells for close to 400 bucks. So we had a situation where if the company I'm dealing with just relisted the card earlier, maybe within a week standpoint, then I could have made 700, 800 bucks on the card. Could have. Who knows if that guy that bid $780 um, actually won that auction. It may have been another guy who bid a little higher or maybe a little lower, and I wouldn't have to deal with just making 400 bucks. Granted, I paid $50 for that card, $60, and I made after commissions $350, $360. It's still not bad. I'm not complaining. It's still, what, close to a six-fold return? Not bad. Within one year. You just don't see those returns in the stock market. In the card market, that's the norm for the past year, but that's going to return back to normal. So ultimately, yeah, I'm very mad at the fact that I could have sold this card on my wife's store or my store on eBay, and it could have made 300, 400 bucks more. Granted, 300, 400 bucks is not going to pay my rent. But there are cards out there that have gone down significantly in a span of two, three months, especially in how volatile this card market is. I mean, look at Bitcoin as well. It's been very volatile. Within a month's time frame, Bitcoin went from 60000 to about 30000 30000 So timing is very important. The other strange thing that I noticed and how he does his accounting. If you have multiple cards, what he's going to do, and if one person doesn't pay, then he's going to net out those two payments. For instance, I was supposed to receive $1,000 from the NetPro Roger Federer card that I sold with him. And then that card I was talking about, Usain Bolt, what Rick did in terms of his accounting and what he makes his accountants do, I was supposed to receive $1,000 the first time around. So he made an adjustment on his sheet. So it was what? A negative amount. And then he took uh, $1,001 minus 787 So, or whatever the amount was came out to be negative 297. And those two cards, the Usain Bolt card and the Federer card, they were netted against each other. So you take the $1,000 and then you take the $297. You subtract that from the $1,000, which made no sense to me. So he took $1,000 subtracted by 787, which was a second sale of Usain Bolt, two non-payments. And that came a negative 297. And I'm like, what are you doing? So he took a thousand dollars from the federal payment minus 297 came to about 600 something bucks. Then the accountant or probe scene sent me 660 bucks. And I'm like, dude, you short paid me. And then Rick explained, no, 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 I'm going to net it out at the end. The adjustments were made at the end. And I was still confused. I was not not freaking out. I'm like, what are you doing? I was getting a little antsy that, okay, is he trying to trick me? What is he trying to do? I think I figured it out. So Rick sends you the money as a cash advance. And he has a business himself. So as a business, I worked in a small business before. And one of the most important concepts that I learned on the finance and accounting side is that cash is king. So what he probably does is he short pays for the cash advance. He explains to them that I'm going to net out all the adjustments towards the end, probably to save some money in terms of cash flow. He has to make payroll every two weeks, I believe, or every 15 days. And if he short pays them one week, he saves money for the payroll. Eventually, he's going to have to pay the whole amount. That's the only explanation that I can see from all of this. I don't know 
why someone would do that in terms of the accounting. Granted, he does send the payments really quickly, so that's a pro, but you have to make sure that that money, part of that money could go back to him if the buyer returns the card within a 30-day standpoint or 30-day time frame. So there's pros and cons to that. The other con of this, of using this consignment service and other consignment services, is that number one, you have to self-report the taxes. They don't provide anything. And the IRS, in my opinion, is going to be coming down hard on individuals that are consigning large amounts of money. The Biden administration, they're going to be using tools to see if you're getting all, all this cash coming into your bank account and you're not paying taxes, you're not reporting it. And they're going to come down hard on it, in my opinion. So you have to self-report the taxes. I'd rather have them send me, what is it, 1099, but they don't do that. And yeah, so you have to keep track of all these transactions. And I think it's above 600 bucks. You have to do that. Technically, the IRS doesn't care on eBay, but I live in the state of Illinois, and Illinois is broke, so I pretty much have to report it. But looking at my experience from Probstein, there's good and it's bad. I'd give this a 3 out of 5. I would have given it a 3.5 or 4 out of 5, but the way that he handled my Usain Bolt transaction from the get-go, I didn't like. If he had relisted that card right away, I would have made 300 400 bucks more, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm disappointed that, am I going to send to Probstein anytime soon? Probably not. If it's a high-end card, I may. I may think about doing PWCC for the really high end stuff, but I'm thinking that next time I prefer to do some of the not under a thousand dollar cards and over a few hundred dollars. I'm thinking that I should just do it through my wife's company and just deal with it that way. Because if the markets go down significantly, then he may take uh, 21 days if someone doesn't pay. So that's what I don't like about this. And once again, it's his business. So I understand how he runs his business now. And that is, once again, a risk reward choice that I made. So I could complain about it all I want, but I have to remember, I had my own platform to sell the card, but I chose not to. I tried to chase more money and this time around, I didn't get it. Maybe for some higher end cards, I may be get, excuse me I may be getting more money but I will see. Anyways guys, let me know your experiences with Probstein. Do you have good experiences? Do you have bad experience? Let me know. I'm probably going to do a review of PWCC in the future. I may do a video for Sharp Corners. I sent one of my cards to them. And yeah, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll talk to you another time guys. Thanks. Bye.